place. Aloha and good day, friends and yogis. My name is Nicole Spirit. Please subscribe to Yoga with Nicole Spirit for amazing yoga, Pilates, and Qi Gong videos. <clears throat> I wanted to bring my buddies today, Finn and Puka Dog, but I don't know how long they're going to stay. But I've got a little hemp treat for them here. Place. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get seated. We're going to be studying and talking about Aquarius today, the water bearer. It's an air sign. So let's start off by doing some pranayama, some breathing exercises and techniques just to see if we can change things up a little bit. So we're gonna do alternate nostril breathing called Nadi Shodan. And we're gonna take our shaka hand, our right hand, bring in your three middle fingers and leave your thumb and your baby finger out. Then we're gonna pinch off our right nostril and we're gonna inhale through the left. You're gonna pinch off your baby finger, left nostril, exhale right. Inhale right. Pinch it off, exhale left. Inhale left. Pinch it off, exhale right. Inhale right, pinch it off, exhale left. And I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about the Aquarians, about the sign. So it's ruled by the planet Uranus. It's an air sign. Garnet is the gem for February. And um, it rules the calves. One more round, inhale left or wherever you are. Pinch it off, exhale right. They love being teachers and having many around. Ingenious, inspiring, and imaginative. Friendly, honest, smart. And it says that they welcome change, see the big picture, and that they're a natural rebel. Very cool. Let's finish off wherever we are. So releasing, finishing that last round of alternate nostril breathing. Coming to a nice smooth breath, and we're gonna do one more different type of breath control or pranayama technique here. So make sure you're in easy pose. You're sitting up nice and tall. You've got your sitting bones drawn behind you, and you're thinking about being like water, being aqueous. You're the water bearer. So water, if you think about that flow and how things move, water being that energy inside of us, that's the most prominent element. So what are we, 85% like pure water. All right, now we're gonna do the breathing technique known as a breath of fire. So there's a couple options. You can leave your arms down. You can keep your hands on your knees or fold your fingers in and leave the thumbs sticking out. Second variation is arms on a 45 degree angle, sink the shoulders. And I like to learn this breath with the dog's pant. <clears throat> Excuse me, so we send out the tongue and we pants like a thirsty puppy. Good, close your mouth, release your arms, find one normal breath here or two. And if you haven't before, let's try this breath with the mouth closed. So keep your mouth closed, big inhale, and imagine that you're panting. So chest breath, rapid drawn release of the belly. And if you find it challenging, stick your tongue out of your mouth again. Wherever you are, close your mouth. Take two normal breaths here. See how you feel. Now that puppy Finn is gone, we're down to just Puka. I have to give her a hug because she's so nice. Oh, I think he's a Puka. I wanted for a long time to make a class called Pitbull Pilates, and then we got a hund. All right. <laughs> so take a moment, just see how you feel. Notice how your 
energy is today, not only your emotional state, but your physical state, your mental state. And I have a good mantra for us today. And I will ask you to say this mantra. I wrote it down. I am a sovereign being. I am a sovereign being. What does that mean? That means that we are in control of ourselves, of our lives, and we are the ones that are connected straight to source energy, to the spark, whatever it was that made this all happen. And we don't need to be part of any religious group or any group to honor our spark of love and light. Let's do a spinal twist. We'll go to the right. So bring your left hand onto your right knee and gently bring your right hand behind you. Nice little spinal twist here. And then we'll come back to center gently. I am a sovereign being. And then bring your right hand onto your left knee. Left hand behind you just kind of props up the next spine. You look over your left shoulder if that's comfortable. And just vibe your face nice and soft. Everything is good. Let's ever so gently come back to center. And we're gonna come on to all fours. So bring your body so that your hands are under your shoulders, knees are under your hips. And we're going to do a hovering table move just to ignite the core to find that powerhouse energy. So you can stay in tabletop. If it's available, we lift the knees about three or four inches and we pull the navel up towards the spine and we breathe. Hover here for one more breath. Good. And then gently release yourself down. So the next thing we're going to do is plank pose. So take a moment, let's just release the wrists. We're gonna bring our hands so that our fingers face towards the sides of our mat. And then gently, as much as you can, you bring your hands and fingers so that they're pointing towards your knees. And just see how that feels, opening up the wrists. Then ever so gently release and come back to center. If it's available, send one leg back, the other leg back. Notice your hips being high, lower them down. Come into a space that feels like a strong plank. And if it's available, lift one foot at a time. This is actually a Pilates move. I like to do a little kick in the toes. And we'll just do two more on each side. Remember to con contract your core. Good, lower down on the knees. And then we're gonna bring our feet forwards so that we come into a little squat, malasana, squat pose. Pull up the pants a bit. My shirt, no way you can read it, but there's a little Buddha sitting on there and it says, have a kind day. And I thought that would be a really nice sentiment. Today's a nice day to have a kind day. So you're in squat pose, malasana. See if you want to stay here, you can maybe pivot a little bit on the balls of your feet and then lower down through the heels. Maybe you take your hands together at your heart and you might even press your elbows a little bit into the knees. And if that's not available, that's fine. You can stay up on the balls of your feet. Your hands can be forward and you're finding your nice breath. Hmm. We're gonna do 11 froggy squats today. So keep your hands down. I like to raise up on the balls of my feet and we're gonna lift the back side of the body up, the head comes down, and then we're gonna exhale and come back up. And we do 11. That's four already. Last two. Good. Come up with the back side of the body, walk your feet a little closer together, let yourself hang and dangle. You might bend your knees a little bit, let your head be below your heart. Notice if you feel some energy moving right now, and that's good. We want to feel that air changing the breath, changing what's happening. And then we're going to slowly roll the body to stand up. So as you arrive in standing, just take a moment, see how it feels to change that plane where we're now in a different configuration. And once you're up in Tadasana mountain pose, take a moment to ground and root through your feet. Maybe your toes open and stretch and expand, and then you can lower them down from the outside in. 
Find your nice power pose. Remember, Tadasana doesn't look like this. There's a great TED Talk. It's escaping me now, the name of the woman, but she talks about your power postures. So when you're standing, when you're sitting, you've got that presence. You're here, you're rooted, you're grounded. Come here. Come here. Good. And then we're going to do a couple of silk reeling basics. This is part of Qigong. So we're going to take our hands together in front of us, and we're just going to start to reel the silk. So spiral and circle around at your wrists. Smile a little bit, breathe, then go the other way. I've got my comedy team in front of me, my favorite little friends. You're not doing that. Leave her. Good. And then we're going to gently release. No, place. Place pin. This is when the gong show starts. Place. Who can pin? Place. <laughs> All right, now we're going to gently do our elbows. So we're going to spiral. Leave her, please. We're going to spiral at the elbows now. Good. So you let the backs of your hands come together when they come up the front side of the body and you're just opening up through the elbows. Then go the other way. Good. And then we get into the shoulders. So pause for a moment. Lift your shoulders. Make a big circle up and back. Go at your own pace. Have fun. Go forwards. Look at something that makes you smile. Could be me, could be the sunshine outside, could be your favorite pet. Good, come back to center. And then just a moment to reset. Bring the shoulders back one or two times. Good, and then just release all together. Then we're gonna get into the lower body. So first thing we wanna do is pick up our right foot. And if it's available, you're gonna even keep it off of the ground and you're just gonna circle at your ankle. If it's too much, you leave your toes on the floor. So you have two points of contact. If you're raised up, see if you can open your toes. Really get some good expression going through your feet. Go one way, go the other way. This is really good for your foot that's moving, and it's also good for your standing leg for balance. All right, let's change sides. Oh, let's shake front with our right foot, shake side, and shake back, then come back to center, and then we'll do the other side. Take your right foot, and, sorry, your left foot is now extended. Again, if it's available, open the toes, lift, balance. If not, just leave your toes on the floor and start to circle at that ankle. So for any balance postures, looking at a fixed point really helps. It's known as your gaze or your drishti, that you keep your drishti on something not moving. Go the other way with the circle if you haven't already. Expanding and opening through the foot, and then a little shake front, shake side, shake back. Leave it, Finn. Leave. Leave. He stole my sock. All right, we're coming back to center. Then, <coughs> pardon me, bring your feet apart a little bit more than hip width. Bring your hands onto your knees, and we're going to bring the knees together. Spiral in circles of your knees. Amazing. I'm so grateful you're here for Zodiac Series Yoga. And then we're going to go the other way. What do we have on the list today? We've got chair pose, but we're going to do a variation. Good. Come back to center. Bring your feet together now. Hands still on the knees, and you're just going to circle in one direction. Send your knees some love. I love you, knees. You're so helpful. They say knees represent ego and pride. This is in the Louise Hay work about which body parts represent which emotions. Great book called You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. It's a must. Good. Come back to center. Good. Now we're talking about the breath today. So step your feet comfortably back into Tadasana, your mountain pose. And quick shout out for an amazing movie called 14 peaks. It's a must. All right. Especially if you like mountains or anything courageous. So our arms are back by our sides and we're going to lift, inhale up. And like a butterfly, we're going to fan away anything that no longer works. 
And we're gonna make a long, exaggerated ha breath on the exhale. Let's do four together. Start to visualize your caterpillar in the cocoon. And slowly but surely, you're creating your butterfly, your dragonfly, your dragon. Good. And coming to who you are now. So, chair pose, utkatasana, chair pose. Sometimes it's fun to say it. Can you say it? Utkatasana. Asana means pose, utka means chair. So, we're going to sit in our imaginary chair. All right, sit in your chair. And the first thing that happens is your buns flare out. So, you want to just tuck your tailbone and then bring the arms up to a comfortable level. So, see if that means straight out in front or you can raise your arms up overhead. See what is available. If you can try this today, maybe raise up on the toes. And my dog model is right in my way, but that's okay. And again, notice that the buns start to flare out back. Again, just guiding that tailbone to stay a bit more tucked and maintaining that nice length in the spine. Good, we're gonna stand up, release our heels down, keep breathing, and we're gonna try that again. This time we're gonna try dancing chair. So come down, hips tuck in a little bit, arms are straight out in front of you, and we're going to take our left arm and bring it right behind us, like you're opening up to the side, to the left, and you're gonna hug a tree on the left side. Remember when you're hugging trees or even energetically working with them, ask first, it's very respectful. You don't just run up to a healer and say, heal me. Good, bring your left arm back forwards. Pause for a moment, maybe a little bounce here, and then open the right arm wide. Hug your tree. Imagine a tree you're hugging right now, respectfully asking, maybe share energy, I love you. And then bring that right arm back. You'd be so surprised what happens. Good, stand back up, find your breath. <sighs> And we're gonna do one pose now that's triangle pose with a couple variations. So a little bit of an option today. So step your legs one leg length apart as wide as, as comfortable for you. It should be about the distance between your feet is the length of one of your legs. So you've got a nice equilateral triangle. Turn the right toes out. Good. And what we're gonna do is extend our arms out to the sides, bump the hips to the left, and then we're gonna gently just lower that right arm down in front of our calf. If you're at the floor, you're probably out of a lateral bend. So just see if you wanna rest your hand there. And if it's available, left arm can reach straight up. You don't have to do that. You can also have your left hand on your hip. And breathe. Both legs are strong here. Your core is engaged. And this in fact works all of your seven chakras in the body and the five closed down ones that we're opening as well. Let's charge up, big breath, come back up to standing. And then we just come into a reverse triangle where we lift our right arm, our left hand falls behind at the thigh. Good, and then we're gonna release down, come back to both arms by your sides, turn your right foot in, and then your left foot out. One of my favorite little reminders about triangle is that it is so powerful. And it is actually a core exercise. It's really hard to hold your body up. So arms straighten to the sides. We bump the hips to the right. Like somebody's grabbed your wrist and they're pulling you over to the left. Gently feel that extension. And then if it's available, lowering yourself down. So you can use that lower hand to help prop up on your leg. But if it's available, you keep it in front. And then you choose what you wanna do with that right arm. You can keep your hand on your hip. You can extend your right arm all the way up. You can look up at your hand. You can look out, so, out sideways or look down at your foot, whichever is most comfortable. One more breath. Feel that core, feel that vibration from the middle body. My cinnamon buns <laughs> jiggling at the middle. Big inhale breath. I love my body. I love your body. Everybody's perfect. And we come back up to center with nice strong legs and arms. Lower your arms now. Bring that left foot back to center. And then we're gonna bring Finn over to the mat. And we're gonna ask him to place. Lie down, buddy. Lie down, buddy. 
Good boy, stay. And then the next thing we're gonna do is a beautiful hummingbird pose. So this is similar to chair. We're gonna prop up on our toes. We're gonna come into a chair position again. There's my friend John walking by. Hi, John. And we're gonna send our arms behind us and we're gonna imagine that we're looking or gazing into a beautiful little pool of light. And if I did it like this, my gaze would be that I am a dog. Right, Ben? All right. Hummer, hummingbird, the sign of the healers, the sign of joy, and the sign of a gift. Good, let's come back up. And I'm going to introduce one more pose that I love so, so dearly, spider pose. So, please, place, lie down. Lie down. Stay. Nope. Stop. This is when it gets embarrassing. Effing embarrassing. Come. Stop. And place. Place. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to have our feet apart um, from Letter Kenny, the show Letter Kenny, Canadian show, really funny. The uh, hockey coach, when he gets mad, He's like, it's effing embarrassing. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, I don't want to swear, but anyways. So feet are more than hip width apart. We're going to lower down. We're going to bring our hands to the ground. You're not going to see anything I'm doing because of my dog models. And you're going to bring yourself onto, you're propped up onto your toes, onto the balls of your feet. And you're going to release your head down forwards as much as comfortable. If it's available, you cross your forearms and you remember that the spider is the animal that gives the symbolism that we weave our own web. We never get caught in the limitations of others. Release your heels, slowly start to stand back up. And we're gonna do one little Qigong flow. Buddha holds up the earth. So bring your hands down in front of your belly and ever so gently, we're gonna lift the hands at the chest, the palms face our body, and then they start to rotate and lift up. And then we're gonna release, the hands rotate so that they face your chest, and then they come down to this position. So inhaling up, Buddha holds up the earth, And you coordinate your breath. The inhale, one direction. The exhale, the other direction. And just see if you can slow things down. Chi means energy. In yoga, we use the word prana. And gong means skills. So Chinese yoga or working with energy is basically another way to talk about yoga. Qigong. Chinese yoga, Chinese movement. Last one. And I love the energy that we start to feel in our hands when we feel our energy, our chi ball. Just release now. I want you to bring your hands together. Rub, rub, rub. Create some friction, light, warmth. Create a chi ball, energy ball, mana ball. And we're gonna just open and close our hands, not so that they touch, but just so that there's a curve in the hands and you feel and sense. I really like to close my eyes here. Feel and sense like a magnetism between your hands, like an energy pushing the hands apart and then gently when they float back together, it's like there's almost like a big thick substance. And this is a healing energy ball that we can imagine is inside of our own body. And we can also use this to infuse love and healing onto us. So gently pause, imagine that this ball is the most vibrant color for you today, the most perfect energy for your healing. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> and then bring it over your head. And then I want you to just gently imagine that you're dissolving this energy ball over the top of your head, floating it down through your body like there's streams and ribbons of that color and your favorite light floating through you all the way down now into the legs and out the earth. And then we'll finish today in our standing meditation pose, which is bamboo in the wind. So bring your feet a little bit closer together. Not quite finished. We're just going to do some calf raises up and down. 
And if you have a partner that's a personal trainer, they'll tell you, why don't you do calf raises in a squat position? <laughs> so I'm just gonna introduce it, okay? So we come into a squat, we come down to that nice position for us, and we prop up on our toes, and my models are in the way, and then we just do calf raises from down here. It's not easy. If that's too much, just stay with your nice calf raise in the upright position. Another place to do calf raises, let's come up to standing, <laughs> keep going, 10 more, is on a stair. Because when you're on stairs, your heel can lower more than it can on a flat surface. So you bend the knees a little bit, go on some stairs, and do a few of these, and it's super good for your calves. Excellent. Let's come back to standing. Shake out one leg, shake out the other. Shake out the first foot, shake out the other. Stop and sit. Sit my little yin and yang. Sit my pickles. Oh my gosh, you should see them from the top. They look pretty cute. No, 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 no. Not today. Come here. Stop and sit. Bamboo in the wind. So bring your hands over your lower belly or Dan Tian elixir field bank account for energy, spirituality. And I want you to just sway and rock. With no motive, you're just allowing for your body to really get what it needs to let go of what no longer works. And for now, we're just going to enjoy thinking about the rest of our day. I'm so proud of you for coming to this class. And one of the best reminders I've ever gotten that every time you get on your mat, it's like the mat says, I love you. <clears throat> you say that you love yourself. So I think I'm actually going to paint that on my mat, maybe in like vegan non-toxic nail polish or some paint or something where it just says, I love you. And you look at your mat and you're like, oh my gosh, that's such a good reminder. Anyways, little things that we can do to help us, to help each other, to help ourselves. And it's such a good reminder not to compare ever. Don't compare yourself even to yourself. You're perfect the way you are. I love you. And I'm so, so happy for you to be exploring your sense of physical nature and your spirituality bridging together in this beautiful practice known as yoga. So take good care. We'll leave our hands at the belly. And when it feels right, just do a little circle, clockwise circle, just to finish things off, honoring the direction of digestion, and then let's let everything go with a sigh. <sighs> Bring your hands together. I'm going to float mine up to the third eye. You can choose third eye, heart, wherever you feel like. The light in me greatly honors and sees the light in you. Namaste. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Like, this video, share it, subscribe to Yoga with Nicole Spirit, and I'm so, so grateful for your energy. Oh yeah, and I had a joke today. Um, what is the only sports team, who are the uh, athletes that make the most mess <laughs> when they eat? Uh, basketball players because they dribble all over the court. Silly. Love you. Good day. <laughs>